G'day, John for the Hot End again. Another printer review. This time we're looking at the Ender 2. The Ender 2. What a cute little printer. I, I really like this printer. We did a video earlier about the assembly and first look at the Ender. So since that time I've had it at my place and I've been printing madly, as you can see. Most of these are in PLA. Uh, I think a couple of them were in PETG as well, uh, which was quite usable on this bed plate that they have. I'm not sure what it is. It looks and feels a little bit like Biltech. Now the volume on this one, we're looking at 150 by 150 by 200. So it's not a mini printer and it's not a big printer. It's just, it's a, a good size. I, I don't mind the 150s, they're, they're quite handy. And as you can see, this one in particular is, you know, it can print quite big stuff out of it. The quality of this thing, for what it is, uh, it, it's, it's, Damn fine, I like it. It's got a proper trapezoid lead screw. Uh, it's got a, a molded extruder. Again, we've got one of these enclosed hot ends. Um, it's a, a cloned type hot end. Uh, there is no print fan on this printer, but the fan that blows onto the cooling fins of the hot end actually does create some draft underneath. So for PLA, uh, probably just enough. Now there are some examples here that show some very fine detail where I haven't broken the fine detail off. Uh, so as far as cooling fans go, yeah, it's, it's adequate, adequate. Now, this printer is a Bowden setup, as you can see, uses V-slot wheels, uh, has reasonably good quality belts by the look of it. They're not, not plastic, they're the, the proper type belt. Um, the V-slots are the correct type wheels for the uh, 2020 extrusion. The vertical extrusion is 2040. And your control box sits down here as a built-in part of the base. And the power supply is separate. So the power supply floating around, yeah, not real keen about. The power supply is connected directly to the printer. The printer has its own on-off switch here, but there's no on-off switch for the power supply. As soon as you plug it in, the power supply cranks up. So um, I put a switch, an inline switch in the cord, uh, just because I can and because I had one. So uh, that way I can turn the power supply off as well as the printer. It does have a heated bed, which is very surprising on a printer of this size. The bed heats up very quickly and, and works very well. The connections at the back here are well and truly out of the way. They don't hit anything. There's no strain on them. Um, it all looks quite good. Now, as far as bed leveling goes, it has one of those Mickey Mouse uh, auto bed level uh, selections on the menu, but basically all that does is take the uh, tip of the nozzle to each corner of the bed and it's up to you to then adjust the screws underneath the bed uh, to get your leveling correct. I personally like that system. I've always liked manual bed leveling, which basically this is. Um, I don't like auto bed leveling at all. So for me, that's, that's good. I like the bed leveling. This printer runs on an SD card. You'll see under here, is where the SD card slot is, but it uses micro SD cards. Now when you've got old fat fumbly fingers like mine, getting that micro SD card in and out of that port, which is recessed slightly back into the housing, uh, is difficult. I, found, I had to use tweezers to, to put the SD card in and out. It's a minor thing, I guess, but just, just something that, yeah. Maybe they could put a full-size SD card on there or, or, or protrude it a little so that you can actually grab the thing. It prints in very fine detail. Some of these 
were printed at 0.1, some were printed at 0.15, some were printed at 0.2. Um, like I said, they're mostly PLA, which uh, some of them are PET G, but I can't remember. I think it was the orange is PET G. All of these models are available on Thingiverse. Just search them out, you'll find them. This one in particular, though, is not on Thingiverse. This one is on cults, and you've got to pay for that one. I think I've mentioned this one before. But the detail on that is going to be hard to show because I printed it in the white, but um, Anthony will do his best to, uh, to get some close-ups of that. Uh, and that shows the, uh, the, the, uh, the print fan uh, and how it handles the detail. These ones I printed at no infill uh, and two laps, two, two perimeters. So you'll find when you're looking at closely at these, some of the tops are a little rough, but that's purely because I did it no infill. Uh, and same under there. Uh, because I was in a hurry, I had to get these prints done quite quickly because we wanted to get the review out on this. I do like the fact that there is adjustment on the V-slot wheels with eccentric nuts, so that's great, I love that. It takes up very little room, especially if you can tuck the power supply away somewhere. All in all, uh, a very nice printer. Probably ranks up there with some of the better uh, 150 by 150 printers that we've looked at. If you go back through our videos, you'll see we've done a few of these. Uh, and this one would rank up there with the best of them. Currently retails for around the 250 US dollars. So it's not an expensive printer. It's well worth that price, I would say. All right, that's all I can say about this printer. It's a goodie. Um, catch you on the next one. See ya.